Give me what to say Let me hear you Clearly define What I am to do Let every word Penetrate the heart Let what is said Leave them running to your arms Use me Lord Use me Lord So if you have your Bibles, let's look in Psalm 37 Psalm 37, very, very familiar to us all. Amen. Psalm 37, beginning at verse number 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And if I could, I just want to talk for a minute about our steps are ordered. Our steps are ordered. Psalm 37 is a psalm of David in his old age. He's he's aging now. And he begins to reflect on the things that he has seen concerning God, his personal experiences with God, God's delivering power, his healing power, his mercy, his mercy specifically towards David. And his ability to uphold us even when we fall. David is also seen struggling as we as people do, and I'm sure that we do it at times, with the enigma or the mystery of the prosperity of the wicked. While observing the many struggles and the afflictions of the saints, while it appears as if the wicked will thrive and the saint will struggle, we should know that many are the afflictions of the righteous, those in right standing with God. I came to tell you that you're going to go through something. I'm sorry. You chose to go this walk. Your steps have been ordered. So along this pathway, there are going to be some things that you're going to encounter that are going to be traumatic. They're going to be tough. They're going to be hard. See, the Jesus uh, in Matthew 4 and 45, he says that the Father maketh it to rain on uh, the sun to rise on the evil and the good. And he sends rain to the just and the unjust. They, it, the, the rain doesn't differentiate between who it's going to fall on. It doesn't seek the good person only to fall on. It's just like the sun when the sun shines. It doesn't shine just on the good. It, si- it shines on the evil also. David is, is he's, he's struggling with this like, man, uh, all of us, when we look back on our lives, if we can just look and say God has been good to us, if it really had not been for the Lord on our side, can we just be honest about that? If we really believe and trust in God. See, we need to stop reducing God's power to a cliche or something that we just say in church and and realize, yeah, God, he is a buckler. He is a deliverer. God is a healer. He is peace in the midst of every storm. He is a refuge. He is a tower. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Everything that God says that he is, that he is. Some of us are walking, living, breathing testimonies to the realities of God's mercy and grace. God has done things in some of our lives that people would never know. If sometimes we get a chance to tell the story of how God brought me over, amen? Hallelujah. 
It's not just an overused opinion about how good God is and his mercy. It does. It does endure forever. We are living epistles. It's written within our heart. People come back and look at you and know that you are one of God's children. Amen. When we look at Psalms 31 and 31, it says, In thee, O Lord, do I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in thy righteousness. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Lord, it's you that I am depending on. I'm not depending on what man can do. I'm not depending on the government. See, we need to stop worrying so much and start trusting in God more. We're living in a day and time. We're living in a generation where people are so easily moved. They're swayed by the things that are happening in the world because our trust and our faith in God is not aligning to his word. Oh, they say, oh, you know, they're going to shut down this and they're going to shut that down. And no, no, I don't I don't believe in all of that, because in Psalms 125 and one, it says that they that trust in the Lord, not in man, but they that trust in the Lord, they shall be or they are like as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. It can't be shaken. But it will abide forever. I like the Amplified verse. It says, those who trust in or, or lean on and confidently hope in the Lord are like Mount Zion. This cannot be moved. It abides. It stands fast forever. Politics don't shake it. The doctor's report doesn't shake it. A sermon doesn't shake it. My trust is not in the government. What the government does doesn't move me. I'm like Mount Zion. I'm not going to be moved. I'm going to stand on God's words and God's promises all the way until the very end. It's not my job that I'm depending on. I'm depending on the Lord because my trust in him. I'm not going to be moved because a sermon convicts me. As a matter of fact, Lord, convict me even the more. Whatever word that you send my way, make me get closer to you. Expose me for who I am. Lord, search me if it's something that I'm doing wrong, if it's something I'm saying wrong, if I'm not treating people right. Father, show me, Lord, cleanse me of unrighteousness so that I can lift my hands up before you. In Psalms 139 and 23, the word says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. Lord, search, just search me, God, if it's something that I've done wrong. If it's something that's displeasing to you, if I'm lazy, remove it out of me. If I'm trifling, remove the triflingness out of me. If I'm a liar, remove the lying out of me. If I got doubt, remove the doubt out of me. If I got fear, remove the fear out of me. If I got anger, remove the anger out of me. If I got bitterness, remove the bitterness out of me. If I got hate, remove the hate out of me. If I got doubt, remove Remove it, God. Remove it out of me, God. Search me, God. Let a sermon convict me because I want to be better. I want to stand before you, God. And when you see me, you can't find any fault in me. Hallelujah. Praise the living God. Search me, God. When we look at this Psalm of David, the, the focus is really always in verse 25. Where we always talk about, you know, I've been young and, and now I'm old. And I've not seen the righteous forsaken. No seed begging bread. Everybody knows that. Everybody talks about that. But David is talking about a little bit more than just that. Because you find that in the middle of the sermon, of the, of the, of the psalm. When you look at the very first verse of Psalm 37... 37 and 1, it says, fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious 
against the workers of iniquity. In verse 3, it says, sweat to trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Notice the first thing that David talks about in this psalm. He didn't go right into I had been young and now I am old. He said fret not. He said fret not. Fret is a Hebrew word and the translation of the word is actually chara which means burned or distressed or angry or troubled or displeased. Uh, the word is actually where we get the word charred from or scorched when y'all burn y'all food up. You know, you char it or you, you scorch it. You know, when you got the ribs on there too long and they get crispy, you done scorched them ribs, you done burnt them ribs up. It's telling us, it's, it's interesting that it's telling us that people would get incensed or heated or burned up or displeased about the success of others. Isn't that something? That you can burn in displeasure of the success that God has placed upon others. And I just said that God reigns upon the just as well as the unjust. The sun shines on the evil as well as the good. But there are some who allow their envious, their, the, the way that they feel about people to burn within them to the point that David said, fret not. Don't be displeased about those that are achieving things. When we look at Job 20 and 4, it says, Knowest thou not this of old, since man was placed upon the earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short, and the joy of the hypocrite but for a moment. Brothers and sisters, when you look about how long eternity is, it might appear as if the wicked is rejoicing and they're having a good time. But it's short-lived. It's only for a time. It's only for a season. See, the answer for fretting is having faith in God. Regardless of the circumstances and around us or what you find yourself in, it's having faith and trusting in God. See, good faith, true faith produces works and not just any works. It produces good works. You want to work for God. You have no complaints. You just want to serve. Whether or not they call you to the mic, if I never preach another sermon, it doesn't matter to me. Because all I want to do is just serve God in whatever capacity he has called me to. If I got to clean out the toilets, it's what he's called me to. If I got to cut grass, it's what he's called me to. If I got to break leaves, it's what he's called me to. Whatever he has called me to because see my mind goes back when I used to sleep in my car see my mind goes back when I used to run the streets and how God delivered and saved me what can I render unto the Lord for all his benefits towards me I'm going to lift up the cup hallelujah what can I render unto him if you've ever lost everything in your life if you had nothing but the clothes on your back, you would serve God with every single thing that you have. It doesn't matter. It's all about pleasing God. When we look at there, there's three things really in verses 23 and 24 that I kind of want to bring your attention to. It says in verse 23, Davis tells us that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. I want to point some things out outside of what we normally hear because David is trying to tell us something about being envious and about God's ability to keep his people. When you look at the word good, it's a Hebrew word for giver. It actually means or signifies a strong man or a conqueror. And it's very interesting that it's placed here because it shows that the, very, the most powerful man, the most powerful woman, the most powerful person, unless they are supported by God, their strength and their courage is meaningless. 
What is it? But we asked a question. I said, Brother Griffey, you're, you're talking out of the Psalms. You're in the Old Testament. Where do we get our strength from in the New Testament? We're New Testament believers like we like to call ourselves. Look at Philippians 4 and 13. What does it say? It said, I can do just a couple of things. I can do maybe one or two things. It says, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthened me as a strong and courageous that the good man is that David describes. He can do nothing without God. I don't care how powerful you are. I don't care how much of a great intercessor you are. Amen. You might be able to pray down heaven. Amen. But unless God is with you, you are nothing. You won't make it without him. Don't try to let this world fool you or trick you into thinking that you don't need God, that you don't need the Holy Ghost. The devil is a lie. You better. You know you got to have God. It is Christ. Who strengthens us? In verse 12 of Philippians, Paul said that I know how to make do with a little. If I got a little thing, I know how to make do with that. And I know how to make do when he blesses me, when I got a lot. And in all circumstances, not just some circumstances, all circumstances, I have learned the secret of being content. Whether well fed, whether my stomach is blowed out, or whether I'm hungry, whether I'm in abundance, or whether I'm in need, he was able to be content. Why? It was through Christ that he had found the ability that things didn't matter what the world does. It doesn't matter what the president does. It doesn't matter what the government does. My faith and my hope is on God, on Jesus Christ. Because he and he alone has never failed me. They might cut Social Security, but Jesus is my strength. He is my redeemer, and we have to remember that. Stop depending on man. Stop fretting. Stop wondering what's going to happen. I'm going to trust in the Lord. I didn't trust it this far. I didn't believe this long. Amen. We are almost a home base. You better hang on in there. You better believe like you ain't never believed. You better pray like you ain't never prayed. You better open your Bible like you ain't never opened it before. You better open, bust the church doors open. When they come in, get up in here to church. You better pray as never before. He was able to be content because it's Christ who was strengthening him. I like the Amplified version. It says in verse 12, I know how to be abased. And live humbly in a, in a hindered or impeded circumstances. He know, I know how to also to enjoy plenty and live in abundance. I have learned in all and all circumstances the secret of facing every situation, whether well fed or going hungry, having sufficiency and enough to spare or going without being in one, it's in verse 13, it says, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything. I am equal to anything through him. He infuses strength in me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. It's Christ's ability to fulfill all that I need. If you would just trust in him, if you would just believe in him, if you would just have faith that he would give you the answers that you need. He's all sufficient. Ordered. When we look at ordered, it said it means to stand erect. What does that mean by that? Our steps are arranged. When we go through this journey, we shouldn't walk through this journey with our heads down. We shouldn't walk through this journey bent all over and broke down. We should walk in this journey. I am a child of God. I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. He walked upright. God says, stand upright before me. Now, we don't walk with our heads down. We walk in victory. We shout before the battle has even been won. See, when he says delighted, I'm going words and words. I'm using what David it says. It says God takes pleasure or is pleased with the way of a person who trusts and follows him. 
When you trust and follow God, he delights in you. Isn't that something to have God delight in you? Because you trust and follow after him. God delights in you because you work in his kingdom. God delights in you because you obey his word. You obey his commandments. He delights in you because you do his will. Trust. You got to have trust. You got to have confidence. Belief in the reliability of God's word. His promises to keep us no matter what. He has never forsaken us. Even if you look back on the worst time of your life, if you are still in this room, if you are living and breathing right now, guess what? God has not forsaken you. You might not be in the place that you thought that you should be, but you are in the place that God wants you to be in. See, some people make, uh, in verse 24 it says, when he says, though, he may fall. When we look at verse 24, it says, though he fall, he should not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. When he says, though he may fall, he doesn't say you will fall, but you might fall. But you don't, you're not utterly cast down. Cast down is falling on your face. See, some people, we make mistakes along this journey. Can we just admit that? We make slip-ups. We make little boo-boos. We do things that might not be pleasing to God. But he shall no way cast us down. Now, it's a difference between slipping and falling than falling and departing from the faith. Turn to 1 Timothy 4 and 1. Look at what Paul says to Timothy. He said, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. See, there's a difference than making a mistake than when you're seduced by the nonsense of the world. When you're seduced by false doctrine, when you depart from God's promises, when you walk away, it's different when we fall, when we make a mistake, than when you actually walk away from the faith. Verse 24 reminds us that God doesn't always prevent us from stumbling. Sometimes he's going to fall. Sometimes you're going to make a mistake. But what does he say? He promises in that mistake to uphold you. When you read the Amplified Version, it says that God grabs our hand and holds us up. He holds us up when we're struggling. He holds us up when the doctor gave a bad report. He holds us up when our husband walked out on us. He holds us up when you lose your job. When you feel like you can't go on, there's a hand, there's a still small voice that tells you just keep on. Just hold on. I got you. God's hand is grasping a hold of you. Isaiah 41 and 10. It's not up there. I'm going to read it. It says in the Amplified, he's talking to Israel. He said, fear not. There's nothing to fear for I am with you. Do not look around you in terror and be dismayed. Don't worry about what they're doing in the Ukraine. Don't worry about what the next president going to do. Don't be dismayed about the things that you see. For I am your God. I will strengthen and harden you to difficulties. Yes, I will help you. Yes, I will hold you up and retain you with my victorious right hand of righteous and peace. No matter what the world is doing, God gave a promise to Israel. Even in the midst of their captivity, he still kept them. Even in the midst of our situations we're dealing with, saints of God, God is still keeping us. If you are in this room again, God is keeping you. He's watching over you. Can you imagine being in a place not right here over in Africa and all of these war zones? But here we are. We're able to give God the glory. We're able to praise him. We're able to magnify him freely. And people don't even come to church. Can you imagine that? Being in a place where you can freely come and give God the glory and praise. 
but I'm too busy right now. I'm tied up. We reduce coming to church. We want God to uphold us when we fall. But we'll give him only three hours a week at the most. Three hours a week we'll give him. But if I fall, if I stumble, Lord, I need you. If you're in the hospital, Lord, I need you. But what are you giving him? What are you giving God? What are you giving back to him? Are you praying? Are you witnessing? Are you fasting? Are you interceding? Are you letting people see the light in your life? What are you doing? Think about that. Think about that. We got a time. We're at the point in a generation where we have the time. How long are we going to be in church? Because people will sit and they be texting one another, what you eat for dinner? In the midst of the sermon. And they miss everything. They miss what God has for them because they can't pay attention to God's word. Don't be tricked by it. Don't be dismayed. Don't look around. Stay on the word. Stay focused on God's word. In verse 37 and 25, David said these words, I have been young and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken, nor is seed begging bread. See, righteousness here refers or speaks to individuals who live according or in accordance to God's words. Those who are faithful and strive to follow God's commands. It is a reminder of God's faithfulness and his provision for those who are living righteously. See, we always go back to this particular scripture, but David is trying to show us something. God will never leave us. He will never forsake us. He will provide for us. He will keep us when we fall. Don't fret. The first thing he says, stop fretting. Stop getting upset about what other people are doing. Stop allowing yourself to be mad about what's happening in other people's lives. But if you focus on me, If you trust in me, he's teaching us something. See, this psalm really provides us with guidance on how to live in faith in God and wisdom in the face of evil and an uncertain world. How many know we're living in uncertain times? We've been preached, man, we are living in days that are very strange. We've never seen days like this before. We've never seen the way that media is taking over our world, our communities. You don't know what to believe. You don't know who to trust. But they that wait upon the Lord, I am telling you right now, if you wait upon the Lord, if you trust in him, if you have faith in his word and in his promises, he will never leave you. He will never fake you. See, we're living in a time where people are scared. But God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. He has given us discernment. Let's use the discernment that God has given us bind every spirit of fear bind every spirit of doubt bind every spirit anything that will keep you from God that's what David is trying to teach us how to live in the face of uncertain times how to not be envious of what the wicked is doing how to not be concerned about what's happening in the world but to keep his focus on God. We don't, believe, we don't live in fear. We don't live in that. We don't believe in all of that. We don't believe in all of this nonsense. Let's stand upon God's word. Let's stand upon God's promises. Let's believe what God has said. Every single word that he has given us, we have to stand upon. My last scripture says... Depart from evil, in verse 26, he is ever merciful and lended, and his seed is blessed. Your children will be blessed. He's telling you now. He said, if you believe, then your children are going to be blessed. They're going to be blessed because of you. David said, I never saw the righteous forsaken. Not one time, nor his seed, nor his sons begging bread. So your sons, your children will never beg bread. But it's the righteousness, the people that are righteous. This promise isn't just for everybody. 
This promise is for the righteous. Don't be envious of people. Don't worry about what people are doing. I remember I had a conversation, and I was like, man, you know, be worried, you know, wondering about certain things. They're like, look, you just do your part. That was it. That's all I needed to hear. You know what? You just do what you need to do. No matter who shows up, it don't matter. If you're the only one there, you do what you got to do. Because guess what? God will give you the strength to do the work of 10 people. God will give you the ability to do the work of 20 people. You ain't got to worry about what the crowd says. You ain't got to worry about what the crowd does. See, people want to pat on the back, but see, I want my reward later. I want my reward when I'm standing. Man, saints of God, I'm telling you. I am telling you. Don't back up on God now. Don't back up. Don't back up. People leaving this earth. Man, don't back up. You better stand on God's promises. You better have faith in him. You better trust in him. You better hold on to this word with all that you have. I don't care. You better do all the things that God has called and asked you to do because we're living in perilous times and people are falling asleep while the enemy is steadily working. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just bless you, God. I thank you for your word, for your word is life. Father, touch your people, God. Touch our minds and hearts and encourage us to do your will. Help us, God, not to have excuses, no complaints, but to serve you with excellence, God. To give you everything that we have. Help us, Holy Ghost. Father, even now, pour out your anointing in this room. Fill us, God, again. God, do it, Lord. Pour it out, God, as never before. Lord, we need your strength. We need your guidance, God. Bind fear and doubt, discouragement and disappointment, heartache and pain. Give us strength for tomorrow, God, in the name of Jesus. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Every scheme that you have, we cancel assignments of the devil in the name of Jesus. The blood, we plead the blood of Jesus right now, God. God, do it now, God. Father, touch every heart in this room, every family represented, God. Help us not to fret, but to believe and to trust in your word. We give you all of the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Give me what to say. Let me hear you. Thank you for listening. If this teaching has been a blessing to you and you'd like to partner with our ministry to share the message of Jesus Christ, please visit our website at www.hmclive.org and click the donate button. If you're in our area, we invite you to join us at 4317 Lippincott Boulevard, Burton, Michigan, 48519. Harris Memorial, Church of God in Christ, teaching the truth and showing the love. Use me, Lord.